Hey, future respiratory therapist. So I woke up this morning and I kind of caught up on some news. And what I found was the NBA season has now been suspended uh, indefinitely uh, due to the coronavirus outbreak. And so I, I got to thinking, I was like, you know, I need to better educate myself on this 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 outbreak because you hear about it and you know what's going on but you may not necessarily really dive into it you may think like ah, it's kind of all being blown out of proportion and and you can feel that way if you want to i'm not here to, to convince you one way or another i'm here for 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 three purposes i'm going to give you three tips today to help you maneuver yourself through this outbreak as a future respiratory therapist uh you know, everybody's talking about it. Everybody's taking measures on how to cut down on, on this virus and how to get this under control. But what I realize is that I haven't had this conversation with my students and we haven't really talked about it. And there's a couple reasons for that, but I think it's time to have the conversation. So here we go. Now, I'm not one to reinvent the wheel. So this video has nothing to do about the details of the coronavirus. If you're interested in learning more about the details of the coronavirus, I recommend you to visit the CDC website. I recommend you to visit uh, the World Health Organization's website. And if you just want a quick 20-minute breakdown on it, that's also based off of the facts from those two websites. You can visit my friend Eddie Watson's uh, YouTube channel. He runs ICU Advantage. And back in January of, of 2020, he posted, it was actually January 20th of, of 2020, he put out a video kind of breaking down this coronavirus uh, outbreak. Now, here's what I want to point out to you. You may think it's being overblown, and that's fine, but let me talk about some other recent outbreaks and just put those numbers into comparison for you, okay? Let's go back to 2003 when the SARS outbreak occurred. This, this outbreak lasted for six months, and there was about 81 total cases of it, okay? So I have these numbers written down here. So 81 case, 8,100 cases, 8,000 people basically, okay? If you were alive then or if you were in healthcare then, then you may remember uh, those times, okay? Now, much more recently, back in 2014 to 2016, this one lasted two years. This was the Ebola breakout, and this totaled greater than 28,000 cases, okay? Now, I remember the day I took my students to the clinical setting, and there was an Ebola case in this hospital, and I remember their look on their face when I told them, the patient is in this room, we're going to avoid this room, but we're going to be on the floor. And they were scared to death to even be on the floor. So there's probably a little bit of anxiety surrounding, especially you, you, you student respiratory therapists who are doing clinicals. Some of you are barely just brand new to the hospital. Now you're having to deal with uh, this outbreak, this coronavirus outbreak. Now, that was two years. Ebola lasted two years, greater than 28,000 cases. That was worldwide, Okay. Now, the coronavirus uh, initiated or, or, or came to surface in 2019. Now, here's what I want to point out to you. In January of 2020, when Eddie made his video, which I highly recommend you watch. I'm going to put a link down to it in the comments, okay? So when you get done with this video, go check it out, okay? Uh, there was five cases in the United States of America, five cases, Okay. Now, less than two months later, as of yesterday, the CDC updated their website and updated their numbers and have said that their total cases as of yesterday in the United States of America, 938 cases from five to 938 in two months. Now, again, maybe it's all overblown. Maybe it's not. I'm not here to, to argue that. I'm just giving you the numbers. Now, what's interesting is since 2019, since that original outbreak of this, according to the World Health Organization, there's been a greater than 120,000 confirmed cases and over 4,000 deaths. Now, put those numbers into comparison to the 28,000 cases of Ebola that lasted two years, the 8,000 cases of SARS that lasted six months, and you see that, that, that my gut feeling is that we're only at the tip of the iceberg. And so, so we, need to be, we need to talk about this. And so I hope you stay with me to see my three points. Here they are. The first thing I want you to know as a student going to take care of patients in the hospital is to prepare. Don't panic. Okay, that's the first thing I want you to understand. The number one thing you can do as a student going to clinicals during this situation 
is to prepare yourself mentally. Okay, understand that that fear breeds panic. And if you're scared because the, you're, there may be a coronavirus patient in your hospital, you need to trust your clinical instructors that that one, they're, they're going to do their best not to put you in harm's way. OK, but we still have a job to do. We still have to take care of patients and we may avoid those patients. But it doesn't mean that 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 virus hasn't already spread to another patient who is contagious, but not showing signs and symptoms yet. OK, so prepare yourself in remembering all of the key elements in breaking the chain of transmission. And that's what this big message is here is is point number two is we as healthcare workers are going to be the people that break the chain. We are the we are experts not in infectious disease and in all the intricacies of, of, of illnesses and diseases, but we are the experts when it comes to taking care of sick people. And if you don't view yourself as that, you need to start viewing yourself as that. Now you understand that with that comes, first of all, we take care of our patients, we treat their signs and symptoms and their disease process, right? In doing so, we protect ourselves. We gotta, you got to remember your, your PPE, your personal protective equipment, right? You're gonna, if they're in droplet, remember to put a mask on. Remember to wear gloves. Put a gown on, okay? Obviously, hand hygiene. If, you, if you've paid any attention to the news, you know the number one way to protect yourself is good hand hygiene. That doesn't mean a quick 15-second you know, hand wash. Take your time, get your hands clean, and protect yourself. Okay, now I'm going to point something else out to you that you may not think about as students. Your stethoscope, you're going to listen to these patients. And your stethoscope is now a carrying object for the virus. So I'm going to encourage you to get in the habit of, after you listen to these patients, listen to your patients, to clean your stethoscope before you go put it on the chest of someone else. Okay, that would be a good practice. Now, the other thing I see a lot of times with students is you take your little notebooks in the room and you and you got your gloves on and sometimes you have your, your gowns and everything else and you have your notebooks and you're writing away and then you put it on the patient's table and then you pick it back up in your pen and you're writing away. You have now contaminated your notebook and your pen and pencil. So I'm going to encourage you to try to get to a point to where you don't need to write things down. You don't need to write down pre-vitals, pre-breath sounds, post vitals and post post breath sounds the time challenge yourself to get mentally strong to where you can remember those things so that you're not not contaminating objects that are going to be carried out and back out into the uh the general workplace area and then into another room with another patient okay so remember that now this may be challenging at first maybe you can get another student to stand at the doorway and you can have them document for you while you while you teach yourself how to do this without uh, without, you know, uh, having to write them down. Okay. Now that's, that's taking care of the patient, protecting yourself, but understanding that in protecting yourself, good hand hygiene, reducing any, any, uh, contact transmission from patient to patient due to stethoscopes or pens or notebooks, that is breaking the chain to protect other patients. And that is where this is going to be reduced and gotten to a level to where it is not spreading. As these patients come in and, 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 and influx our hospitals, we've got to be prepared to uh, break the chain in transmission to get these numbers down and under control. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to tell you before I wrap this up is to remember this. HIPAA. This is an area that a lot of students are not going to be prepared for, okay? As these patients and as these cases come into the hospitals, you are going to be inclined to go talk about them. Okay, you're going to be inclined to go call your call your call your your mom or dad or boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever it is and talk about the patient in the hospital XYZ that has the coronavirus. Okay? That's not your job to do. So remember HIPAA. Don't get yourself in trouble with a HIPAA violation saying, oh my gosh, did you know the lady we go to church with? She's in bed 19 at such and such hospital with the coronavirus. It's not your job, so don't do it. The other thing you need to be prepared for is as these patients come in, there's going to be news media that comes to these hospitals. And they're looking for anyone and everyone that will talk to them as you leave the facility. Don't talk to them. You want to get in trouble as a student? 
talk to the media about what's going on inside of a hospital that you're not even employed at. It will get you in trouble. So I encourage you to... <laughs> my, my coworker has a saying, when it comes to HIPAA, zipper your lipper. So I'm going to encourage y'all to zip your lipper when it comes to uh, talking about this outside of the learning environment with your instructors and your classmates and avoid the media. You'll save yourselves a lot of headaches. Stay off of social media with this stuff. It doesn't need to be on there. Okay, let the CDC report the numbers and talk about everything that's happening on. You don't be that person. Okay, so look, guys, that, that's really all I have for you. I just woke up. I said, you know what? Students need to hear this stuff. They need, you need to hear. You need to be prepared for this stuff. You need to understand that you, whether you realize it or not, you are a part of this now. You can't avoid it. You are learning to take care of sick people. These patients are going to come to the hospital, and you are now a part of it. So prepare yourself. Get in the right mindset. Understand that you're the one breaking the chain, and keep your mouth shut when it comes to talking about it outside of a need-to-know basis. Okay? Hey, if you're on spring break, I hope you've had a great spring break. If you're about to go on spring break, have fun. And just keep yourself safe and keep others safe. Best wishes, guys.